Today we have the 2020 Ram 1500 and this might just be the most well-rounded full-size pickup. Today I'm going to give you a full look at everything on the outside, the inside, the cargo bed, take it for a test drive and tell you what kind of unique features we have. And this is actually the Lone Star, AKA the Bighorn trim, which is a lower trim level, but we have about $20,000 worth of options. So you can see just about everything that you can get on this truck. And to top it off, I've got to say, this is wife approved. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Now to start things off under the hood, we actually have something new for 2020. You still get the 3.6 liter V6 standard, but now you can get the three liter Eco Diesel V6. I actually got to drive that Eco Diesel in the Jeep and I rode along in the Eco Diesel in a Ram. It's a very smooth powertrain. It even gets its own transmission to handle the extra torque and you can still tow over 12,000 pounds and get up to 32 miles per gallon on the highway. So if efficiency is a big priority for you, if you do a lot of towing, go for that Eco Diesel. Under the hood in this model, we have the optional 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that you know and love. It's gonna still give you 395 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque, and we even have the e-torque, which is a mild hybrid for a very slight bump in efficiency. This comes with an eight-speed automatic transmission. We'll talk about how it drives in the test drive, and I'll show you the exhaust clip in just a bit. Miles per gallon on our 4x4 model with the e-torque is 17 city, 22 highway, and 19 combined. And we even have an active air dam up front. And we even have an active air dam up front that will deploy once you get to a certain speed. I believe it's about 35 miles an hour to reduce your drag, but it's actually broken on this one. Now I did an MPG test on the highway and I got almost the exact same numbers as the 6.2 liter from GM, which is bigger and more powerful but you're not gonna buy this Hemi for fuel efficiency anyways. Another thing that I really appreciate is that we have the availability, which we have here, is a 33 gallon fuel tank. Now the Ram's max towing can be 12,700 plus pounds, depending on how you equip it, but as equipped right here with this engine, this configuration, and the e-torque, we can tow 11,220 pounds. Now taking a look at the bed, you can get two lengths, a six foot four inch bed, or a five foot seven inch bed, which is what we have right here. We also have the $1,000 option multifunction tailgate. So first of all, you can open it like a regular tailgate and it's damped, or you can open it, there's a little, there's two levers here, one down, one up. This one will swing this door open and then you can leave it like that or you can open this one up as well. And you might be wondering why would I want it to do that? Well, it gives you closer access to your cargo area that's one thing there might be scenarios where you want to have one open one closed when you're unloading or something like that but you can still get a regular tailgate if you want to now on the inside of the bed we also have a one thousand dollar option for the bed utility group to give us four adjustable tie downs led bed lighting on the inside and the spray in bed liner you still get fixed tie downs, but you will lose some space because of the Ram box that I'll show you in a second, but you can still fit four by eight sheets back here. We also have the optional tonneau cover. It's a tri-folding tonneau cover with some solid bracing going across. It's a $700 option. Now, one reason we lose that space on the inside of the bed is because we have the $1,000 optional Ram box. You can get a box on each side that is illuminated with lights. You have 115 volt plug-in, you can drain them, and they're weather sealed. So you gotta think, if you take out the wheel wells and you saw the space on the inside, if that's enough space for you to throw some stuff and you want some extra separated storage, almost like a little toolbox, you could go for the $1,000 Ram box. And this is on both sides of the bed. One other feature that we don't have on ours is a deployable step on the back of the bumper that'll help you get into the back of the truck. Now payload, before you start hating on anybody with the V6, understand that the V6 two-wheel drive is gonna give you the max payload at 2,300 pounds. Our model with the e-torque can give us just under 1,800 pounds and you'll get just a little more for the non-e-torque models. Let's take a look at all of the exterior details. You're gonna get several trim levels from the Tradesman all the way up to the top end limited, but we have the Bighorn, AKA the Lone Star here in Texas with a ton of options. And we even have new for 2020, the Night Edition. So as we take a quick look right up front, you're gonna notice with our Night Edition, we get this black grill. And I think it looks good. Of course, you don't have to get this grill with the Night Edition. We also have the LED premium lighting group. So. These are not standard headlights on this particular trim, but we have them here. 
You'll also see we even get tow hooks with our off-road package and they are black because of our night edition here. But I love the lights from Ram. I like this distinctive look, the, the accent lights. We have LED reflectors here. We've got LED fog lights down below. Style-wise, things are very subjective. I personally like the way that the Ram looks. I think it kind of stands apart from GM and Ford with its own distinctive look. Let me know down below and what you think of this flame red color. It is very bright and vibrant. Another distinctive feature of the night edition is that black Hemi badge, 1500 Hemi badge up there, and these black wheels. It's a little bit interesting because typically you'll get all season wheels, but we have all terrain tires with our off-road group that I'll tell you a little bit more in a little bit. But the black tires, or the black wheels, I think they look good. It's good with the accents of the black badges, this bright red paint, everything seems to go well together. You'll notice that we have the black running boards as well. Those are optional. You certainly do not have to get those. Configuration wise, we have the crew cab. You can get the quad cab, which is extended cab or this crew cab. No single cab uh, for these 2020 models. But again, as we come to the back, you'll see the 4x4 off-road badge. Part of our off-road group that we have right here paired with those 20 inch wheels with the all-terrain tires. The off-road group package gives us those tow hooks, several skid plates underneath, combined with these all-terrain tires and hill descent control. And the big thing that sets the Ram apart from the other full-size competition is the fact that it still has a body-on-frame construction with a multi-link coil suspension in the rear instead of leaf springs to give you the best ride comfort in the class, hands down. Plus, you'll get an anti-spin rear differential standard, but we have the optional 3.92 ratio electronic locking rear. And as we come around to the back, you'll see the LED taillights. That's also part of our uh, premium lighting group, the LED lighting group. We've got more black badging, the Ram 4x4 Lone Star for our Texas here. And then we've got black exhaust tips down below and a full-size spare tire there as well. Uh, you'll get either black exhaust tips or the brighter finished exhaust tips, plus our multifunction tailgate that you saw earlier. Now for those of you with mobility issues, getting into the truck, just know that you have a solid grab handle on both driver and passenger side, plus you can get the optional running boards, or you could even get the four corner air suspension where you can actually have the vehicle lower itself with your key fob to make it easier to get in. Typically on the inside, you'll get a bench seat, but our night edition gives us these bucket seats that are quite comfortable. We also have the level two equipment group that's gonna give us 12-way uh, power seats, including four-way lumbar support, and they're gonna be heated with the heated steering wheel. These are still cloth seats, but they are very comfortable. I've had no complaints being in here whatsoever. Good comfort, support, bolstering, everything's just right. As far as space goes, just about everybody should fit in here just fine. Space is great, headroom, legroom, tall people, short people. For shorter people, you even have power adjustable pedals so you can move them closer to you or you can move them further back. And like I said, the steering wheel is heated. On the upper trims, you can get memory settings, get a power telescoping and tilting wheel, but this one with manual adjustments is just fine. Another thing, like I said, ours are heated, but on those upper trims, you can get ventilated seats. Here's our key fob from Ram. We have the optional remote start on here as well. It's a pretty bulky key fob, feels fairly durable though, can come with a physical key or you can pull a physical key out of here. We don't have the smart entry, but we have push button start. And then let me give you a quick tour of the interior. So up here you've got a kind of a semi-soft synthetic material if you like to put your arm up there, cloth material just like your seat here, and then a rubberized armrest with a little bit of padding. The front two windows are the full one-touch automatic. Got some little storage cubbies down here and even a little foam bottle insert that works good for my bottle. Right to the inside you'll find your lighting controls, electronic parking brake, and even your pedal adjustment. Now here's ramp steering wheel. Like I said, we have the optional heated steering wheel. It is leather wrapped, does have a little bit of a gummy feel to it. You've kind of got your basic controls on the front. You can even control your gear shifting here. Then you have audio controls on the back of the steering wheel. I'd like to see it be a little bit of a thicker rim or maybe a little bit of bulky grips, but I like the four spoke design here. Ram still gives you some physical gauges as you can see left and right. And then we have the optional seven inch information display ahead. On the screen, there is quite a bit of information that you can scroll through, anything from a speedometer to a bunch of different vehicle information you can scroll through, even that easy to access stuff right there. So that's nice to see all of that. A couple fuel economy gauges, a couple trip computers, and then you can customize settings and even see some trailer towing information on there as well. 
Now, like I said, our trim is the Lone Star slash Bighorn. We just have pretty much, you know, a lot of hard plastics in here around there and down here at your knee. The Limited trim, I know for sure, has a nice plush interior if you're into that type of thing. So Ram doesn't give you a column shifter or console shifter. They give you this rotary dial. It does take some getting used to. It does have a rubberized liner around it, so that is nice. You have your four-wheel drive controls down here as well. Um, I love that you have an automatic four-wheel drive as well. That's great if you're in and out of slippery situations and dry situations to where it'll automatically change for you. Auto stop start, you can turn that off there. Downhill assist, or you can lock your rear axle, which is optional on our trim here. Right up on top, we've got a little storage bin with the little rubber liner. And I like this placement of a 12 volt power outlet. If you have a dash cam or if you have a fuzz buster, that'll work good for that. Now this, now this screen is optional for this trim. Even the 8.4 inch screen that you can get is optional. This is over a foot of screen here and it's portrait style going all the way down. I'm not gonna go too terribly into detail with this, but there is a lot that you can do and a lot that you can see on here. Personally, I wish that it was more of a horizontal landscape design instead of vertical because down here when you got to push buttons and stuff, it's quite a ways down from your side of the road. But I mean, there's a lot that you can control on here. Like I, I just showed you all of those apps. Uh, we even have the optional Alpine speaker system, which sounds great. But there's even on the upper trims, a 19 speaker Harman Kardon system. You even get 4G LTE Wi-Fi on here, Sirius XM, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. One thing about CarPlay, at least, maybe Android Auto too, is that it's only on this top portion. It doesn't take up the whole screen because it's the landscape view. It'd be kind of nice to change that, but if we go to our navigation on here, it shows the entire screen. I do wish we had more actual like physical controls on here, um, like a dedicated home button or something like that, but at least you get climate controls so you've got temperature control you've also got fan speed over here to automatic setting it's a dual zone climate control which is nice and you got a couple more controls on that side and then you can even access your backup cam on here without even going into reverse and then there you go you got the dynamic lines you got the hitch line as well so that's good to see right down below we have our trailer brake controller on the left and then we have the optional parking sensors and tow haul mode over here Aside from that backup camera, you can get optional a 360 camera on those upper trims. Now this is another area where Ram kind of sets itself apart from competitors, at least for 2020, is this center console area. So you can leave it as it is right here with a couple of cup holders. You have a little storage bin right there, some coin holders. And then this armrest is massive and nice and soft. You've got one tier here that you can lift up with a rubberized liner or you've got two tier like you do in a lot of vehicles and then you literally have a little math class on the on this underside here so there's a lot of storage right there and this whole cup holder thing can be moved all the way back or you can lock it into another place so that you still have that functional but you have more open space there but you can move it back and have even more space down here and this is a rubberized liner so stuff isn't gonna slide around a bunch you also have a three prong outlet down there. And then this little spot is kind of a good spot for your phone. It wedges in here. You can still charge it through the ports. There are a couple of charging ports there, USB regular and type C and an auxiliary port and an extra little slot right there. So this is definitely the best center console in the business, I would say. Just the way that you can configure everything is, is pretty awesome. And if that wasn't enough, there's an extra little storage bin right here on both sides. Ram also gives you two glove boxes, this one right up above, which is illuminated, and then the one down below is also illuminated, softly damped, and it is lockable. We get an automatic dimming mirror right there, and then right up above, we actually get garage controls on our visor. We've got LED interior lighting up here, plus you can open up your rear window, and we even have the optional dual pane sunroof. So you've got a massive sunroof in here, even though this is a lower trim level. So you don't have to go for a high trim level if you want the dual pane sunroof. So that is totally up to you. Getting into the back seat of the Ram is still really easy. You've got these grab handles on both sides again. Kind of have this cool view with this panoramic roof. And we've got a center folding armrest. These seats are high enough, high enough off the ground to be comfortable. There's a ton of legroom. The back seat space and the front seat space is just fantastic. 
Now I told you that this is wife approved. Part of that is just because of how much space there is back here. I've been hauling my wife around in the back, plus a car seat so she can sit with the car seat. And she's got plenty of space back here. There's AC vents, there's plug-ins. Uh, right in front of you, you got a couple extra cup holders. But the biggest thing is, in the back seat of a truck, of a full-size truck, the last several that we've had, heavy duty, light duty, whatever it is, she just doesn't like them because they're so bumpy and jittery compared to some cars and SUVs. That is not the case with this Ram, and I'll talk more about that in the test drive, but it is super smooth and comfortable back here. Now, if you really wanna get bougie, you can get optional heated and ventilated seats for the back. And on the top two trims, you can actually pull a little button or pull a little lever and recline the seat to where the seat cushion scoots out and you can recline. I wish that they had that available on other trims, but it's just the top two trims. Now in these full-size trucks, not only is the back seat super spacious and still comfortable, and not only do you have the cargo bed and the cubbies up front, but you've got a ton of space and practicality back here as well. So first of all, you got a 40-60 or a 60-40 split folding rear seat. Under these seats, you actually have little hooks, whether you want to use those for groceries or tying something down or whatever. But down here, you get a really flat load floor as well with no center hump whatsoever. And then right under the seats, you've got this little guy right here that can be folded and tied up like that to give you a bigger area. Or you can lift it up like this and have it be its own little contained extra cubby area. And on top of that, right underneath of our carpet, we have a, a separate little cargo box on each side of the cab with a couple tie downs and it even has a ruler on it. Obviously, if you're using this as a truck, you could possibly use that to measure something. Or if you're fishing, I hope you're catching bigger than 15 inch fish, which is what this is limited to. All right, y'all, we're just getting going in this Ram 1500 for the test drive. So in this test drive, I just want you to get an idea of what it's like to drive it, get to hear some of the engine sounds, we we'll talk about ride comfort and honestly once you get behind the wheel and start driving this this is where i think this ram really sets itself apart compared to the other full-size competitors now if this truck can be reliable then i think it's the best all-around truck that there is in the full-size market the coil springs in the back of the truck just seem to make such a huge difference in ride quality. Now right off the bat, the truck is off. Stop start kicks on. And let's get on it. Now it's smooth. Even just partial throttle, this V8 sound is fantastic. And I'll get on it some more in a little bit. Um, so I, I am filming this with uh, binaural audio, so put your headphones in if you want the best experience, just so you know, you'll be able to hear a little bit more of the ambient details and things like that. Now right now we're not on a real, you know, this is a, a mostly smooth road, but when you hit some bumps in this Ram, it just, it soaks things up so well. It dampens things well if you get harsh bumps. And if you get things that typically would get a jittery solid axle, solid axle suspension going, that is not the case in this Ram. I'm very impressed with ride comfort. My wife has been riding in the back seat for a good amount of this. I've had a couple other people in here and everybody agrees just how smooth this is. And I know people that own these trucks for that exact same reason. Now one small takeaway that I'll talk a little bit more about in a little bit is um, the, the handling. Obviously this is a truck, but I just got out of the GMC Sierra and that had a little bit more responsive steering. Uh, the weight of the steering seemed to feel a little bit better. This just feels a little bit sloppy compared to that. It's certainly not bad at all. It's, it's a little bit better than that Ram Power Wagon was, but just one little thing that could be improved upon. But for a truck, it's comfortable. Um, you know, it's not a heavy weighted steering wheel. It's not super light. It's very usable and it's comfortable to live with on a daily basis. Now another small little complaint is this transmission I have heard good things about. I haven't really ever heard bad things about it, but 
when I'm decelerating, I just accelerated right there to see if I can hear it, but when I'm decelerating, even just a normal consistency pace, it can be very clumsy and clunky at times. So as I slow down at this stoplight, even just a gradual slow down, things were good. But a lot of times it seems like going into second and especially first gear, it can be quite clunky and, and jerky. But we're gonna go onto another road here, get around a couple of corners, and just go ahead and get on it. Pedal down. Fantastic, doesn't it? And obviously, um, this is the same road that I typically do my test drives on with other vehicles where handling is a little bit more important. But the another thing about that coil suspension and just the setup here is that it still does a nice job in terms of body lean and body control for a full size truck. It's not like you feel um, like you're out of control with this truck. So that's fantastic. The Ram just, it's just an all around great driving truck. Um, I would say in the full size class, definitely the most comfortable compliant suspension. Steering handling is still behind GM, I would say. Pretty close to Ford. Ford may be a little bit better too, actually. But just all around. Sound and responsiveness of the transmission engine sounds fantastic love that another great aspect of it is that even though we have so a lot of times when you get you know when you get uh, a crew cab short bed you know depending on your configuration you can start to lose some of your payload and towing payload it certainly isn't the best as configured right now but it's towing is still really good at over 11,000 pounds on this little straightaway here, sometimes I, I show you the lane keeping system and kind of veer off. This doesn't come with the lane keeping system. Uh, you can get that if you move up in trim level. Same with the adaptive cruise control and more of the driver assist features, but uh, we still get like things like blind spot monitoring, uh, front and rear parking sonar. And on a, a livable daily basis, I love the ergonomics of the center console. I still would probably myself go for the smaller screen. Uh, the 8.4 inch screen, I believe it is. I just don't like how just about everything is touch screen. A little bit more buttons and menus to go through or touches and menus to go through, but I'm comfortable in here. The materials are just fine. It is hard plastic up there and kind of all around your knees and stuff, but that's this trim level. Um, take it for what it is. You can go up to a different trim if you want, but I love the functionality, the armrest, all the cubbies in the back, it's great. Now we're about to get on a rougher textured road. right here so far this transmission's been quick and responsive and the powertrain feels and sounds refined but we're on this rougher textured road where I like to get on here and, and let you kind of hear some of the road noise with the binaural audio you do tend to hear a little bit more of that versus the way I was doing it but this is one of the quietest vehicles that I have actually ever tested uh, especially on this surface of a road decibel ratings were fantastic it's a quiet cabin you have laminated glass over here wind noise is low road noise is low especially if you come from older trucks where there has been you know notorious noise from road and wind this is gonna really impress you with its comfort and its quietness in fact this actually has active noise control so it helps to filter out uh, some unwanted noises and even slightly enhance pleasant noises so they say braking i haven't been able to tell with this but this does have large rotors i believe they may be best in class as of 2020 initially i thought the brakes felt maybe a little bit soft and a little bit spongy but they're actually pretty good they're pretty responsive for a full-size truck let's go ahead and get on it one more time and that just never gets old Gotta love the Hemi V8. Now before we go ahead and wrap things up, 
what do y'all think of this test drive experience? What do you think of the audio? Uh, leave your comments down below, but let's go ahead and close things up. Now, as we go to wrap things up on this 2020 Ram 1500, there's a lot to like about it. I can definitely see why Ram sales numbers have been increasing and taking over the other domestics. Not only is it powerful, it's still capable. It rides better than any other full-size truck. It's got a ton of space and extra cubbies on the inside, and it's just very practical in general. I also really like the fact that this is a lower trim level, but you saw just how many different options you can get. Of course, it does get expensive with all the extra options, but you can dress this truck up basically however you want it. And like I said, this is definitely wife approved by my wife. She loved the fact that it was the smoothest riding full-size truck that we've been able to drive. And she really enjoyed the aspect plus all the extra cubby space on the inside. So what do y'all think of this Ram 1500? This is my first time reviewing the Ram 1500. So leave your comments down below. Give it a thumbs up if you wanna see more Ram videos. Give it two thumbs down if you didn't like it. Have a great rest of your day.